you've been with the channel at least a couple of months, you know I picked up this Farm All A at auction, WTC auction. And uh, I still haven't done a full service on it. I went out, I plowed with it once, uh, you know, test drove it once, but that's about it. Now, I want to try spraying with it. Somebody made mention that the PTO may not be strong enough to, um, you know, run the pump. I don't know about that. I can't imagine that it wouldn't be. We're going to find out. I'm only going to put about 100 gallons in that 300-gallon sprayer. Uh, just for weight purposes, and I don't want to overwork it or, uh, you know, be a little light in the loafers up there in the front end. But I'm going to do a full service on this tractor. You're in or you're out. everyone that was crying that the 400 has been sitting outside I just wanted to do a little mini update and let you know she inside but uh, got the A here and uh, yep I'm gonna show you all the drain holes and the level holes and the fill holes and whatnot so let's get this thing shut off and regulators dismount and it is an ordeal I still haven't got the step right there like I want so the step is the tire and that's easy on my old knees believe me especially being overweight but okay so let's talk about this for a second so you got pto you got a fill plug here back at the pto you got a fill plug here up front okay these all can join now the reason you have this plug here for filling in this one this is your main plug okay uh, this calls, I thought this called for four and a half gallons. Uh, the parts guy where I just got the oil and I got an oil filter too. So he tells me five and a half. I'm going to tell you why it's not going to matter whether it's four and a half or five and a half in just a second. But anyways, this back here is so that you can actually put about a half a quart of oil in there, uh, gear lube in there, so that the PTO never runs dry waiting on oil from up here so that's the whole reason there's two now there's a level right oh where are you now yeah okay right here that's your level and then let's see the main one is going to be right here okay now it's real easy to pull this pop this pin and drop this rod and i may do that just for easy sake but you don't have to you want to go for it um, and then we have the drain plugs we got drain plug here for the PTO we got drain plug there and we got a drain plug over there so we should be good to go um, again level level and then two fills at the top what am I putting in here okay now there is no seepage I don't have seepage problems I read in the blogs where a lot of the guys, they run 140 if they do indeed have seepage. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Putting 140 in here ain't going to stop the seepage. It might slow it down, uh, but it's not going to stop it. I don't have any seepage. Now, that could mean one of two things. I got good seals, or there ain't nothing in it. Um, I wouldn't doubt when I pop these, if this tractor's done any outside sitting at all, we're going to get some water. And even if this calls for, let's say, four and a half quarts, there could be four and a half quarts of water on top of the oil that was put in there. So anything goes on a first time service on a tractor. So I'm going to start up at the engine oil. We're going to start there and then just work our way back. Let's go. Let's grow. All right. So not everybody does it, but this is your air filter, air cleaner bowl. Um, every time I change oil in a tractor, I definitely clean that out put new oil in it so we're going to do that today um, this is the old petcock method um, open this one up when it starts coming out you know you're full and i am going to use low ash 30 weight on this and put a new filter in now somebody mentioned in my farmall m oil change video wisely that let's say the the farmall 
M that's sitting right there takes eight quarts, which it does. They said you're gonna need another half to full quart because of the filter being dry. And guess what, they're right. So I wanna tell you that ahead of time. Uh, this calls for five quarts. It, you wanna check because you, know, you come out the next day, open that petcock, and I'll bet you don't have any oil running out of it. So you might have to add, maybe not so much on this, but maybe a half a quart or something like that. I had to add almost a full quart to the M just because of that. Uh, same thing with the 756. I did an oil change on this the other day. Uh, this is a gasser, a C291 engine. Uh, calls for nine quarts. And I think I put in about nine and a half because of the filter situation. If this was a German 310, I think it calls for 12. 12 quart skis. So either way, it's fun. Uh, let's get this thing serviced up and build up some confidence. Also putting 140 in the rear end of that, I think it'll quiet some chatter. All right, ahead of time, let's talk about this too. Okay, I haven't even started on, you can see I got a case of oil there, well, they call it a case, but it's 12 quarts there. I case of beer is 24, that's 12, blah, blah, blah. I'm expecting the worst on this rear end. So what I'm gonna do is I'll drain it out. All right, get it drained. See how bad it looks. See how bad everything looks. And then I'll probably put, you know, a couple few gallons or as much as it'll hold a diesel fuel in there and just slowly churn it, drive it around um and then come back and then drain that out uh man it over the years it's definitely worked for me putting some diesel in there and cleaning that out all right so i've had the engine running obviously i drove it in here and uh this plug's ready to pop so we can get some good flowage going and you can tell <laughs> if these move hard it's been a while oh yeah that's why I use a big crescent wrench. Got a lot of leverage like a breaker bar. Let's see if that'll hand turn. I wouldn't doubt we see a little bit of water coming out of the bottom of this, to be honest with you. Ooh. Think we get five quarts out of this? I'll bet you we don't get a glove on all right and that should pop right there yeah I mean I don't know it's black can't even mistake about that Okay, there's some water. See that brown color? I don't know if you can see it if I zoom in or... See, it went from dark brown to, I don't know, like a, a milky brown. That's water. That's probably from the tractor. Sitting outside, that's my guess. You can get condensation even if they're indoors, but usually not that much. Water and the... Engine ain't good. Don't really have to say that for you to know that, but we're just gonna let that run. While that's running, we'll come up here to the filter. We got our little drain plug here, and I'm gonna pop that and then uh, take the filter off. Yeah, and this is uh, <laughs> painted on here pretty solid, so I don't look for this to be easy peasy getting loose. big wrench makes it easy move our existent bucket underneath that yeah and I can turn that by hand now I just want to make sure I'm good to go and should run out about now or not okay a big fat whatever. Oh, that popped pretty easy. 
I think it's the rear transmission. Oh, okay. So now I see now it's running out of here. Since I pop this one. Loose. Loose is on those. There you go. Yeah, oil's pretty thin. Pretty lean, pretty thin. Like so. Plunk it right into the existing bucket. And yes, for you new viewers, there is a difference here between an existent and a non-existent bucket. Well, I'm trying to dig this old o-ring out and it don't want to come out almost like I told you when I change oil on the M some guys will use them twice but it's almost like this one's been used factory original I believe they do make spin-ons for these um, I'll keep the tractor original it's no big deal for me not to have a spin on that's the old one and uh, I'll put a new, I'll put the new one in. All the filters come with a new one, so that's what I'll do. I just take the new one. I got a little bit of oil on there. Just get it kind of oily and seat at home. Yeah, and there we go. Down for the count. You don't take your wires off. You want to definitely make sure that you're not pulling on them and tugging on them and whatever on them. Make sure your sticker's out so you're one of the cool kids. Enter it up with the filter, the hole in the filter, drop her down, and drive her home. Figure tighten it up about 90% of the way. You'll thumb wrench out and take her the rest. Wasn't very tight on there. I'm surprised I didn't have a bunch of leakage. That'll do. Drain plug. Pop that sucker right back in there. It's in the hole. As Bill Murray said. I'm wrench her down. Dynamite! We're done draining. We're done draining down at the oil pan. So I am totally down with slapping the oil plug back in. It's a pretty quick job. Never done it. I get it. But once you've done it so many times, you could do it in your sleep, blindfolded, with earplugs. Alright, I don't reef, 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 but I know what tight is. Alright, yep, we're going to come up top here, your fill spot. That's what the inside of that looks like. You can't really see it because there's not enough light, but... When I go to the other side, we're going to loosen this pet cock up. We'll loosen that up. What that does is as soon as it's running out of there, you know we're full and good to go. Again, this should take right around five quarts. I will check it again tomorrow before I run it and make sure that it doesn't need another, you know, half a quart or something like that due to the oil filter sucking it up. But that's a really small oil filter, so I don't expect it to be a huge ordeal. Yeah. I mean, the fill spot's big enough that, uh, good to go. Every drip is a penny. Nah, this is expensive oil, though. Um, unfortunately, he told me that he doesn't know if he's going to be able to get any more in. I don't know. You can, I'll go somewhere else that does have it. Can't tell me no place is going to carry low-ash 30-weight oil. I'll add from the other side so I can watch Petcock. 
as well. One drip, two drip. Yep, you can see we're running pretty good, so most definitely full. Now I'm gonna shut her down. There you go. And uh, I'll bet you we fire this thing up, we let that filter absorb some of this oil. And I'll bet we're about a, oh, I'll bet maybe even a half a quart low. So let's start our engines. There you go. to go so I'm satisfied with that oil change you know a week from now I'm out messing around or something I'll check it again but I think it's good ended up taking six quarts all right so now we're gonna pull the air cleaner bowl off and you just twist this off of here a little twisty and the bowl just drops basically you'll know you're loose enough when the bowl drops not the ball, but the bowl. Now, there hasn't been butter churned on this farm in probably 75 years. Butter's back on the menu, boys. I mean, there ain't, there ain't nothing you can really do about it, you know? I mean, change it out. Obviously, there's water in there and whatnot. Um, you know, there was a little bit of water in the engine oil. It was not antifreeze. Okay, I, I, didn't, I didn't sense that it was antifreeze. I don't see weird things coming out of the exhaust or anything or, that would indicate a, a bad head gasket. So, I think this tractor did a little bit of sitting in the elements. And, uh, and or, this just hasn't been changed in... 10 years, so we're gonna dump that in the existing bucket. Ooh, ooh, milky white, dino might. There you go, folks. Now you can use this for white paint. Um, if you have a milk house, you can use that for white wash inside, so that when the milk inspector comes, you can, they'll be like, wow, it smells like, you know, oil and fuel, but the reality is at least it's white. Beep, beep. I just take a rag, get down in there. Typically, the oil that I put back in this, there's always like that, you know, half a quart or something left over. So I, I usually end up using the same. So wait a minute, we got butter and mayonnaise? Beep, beep. I'm going to take my leftover quart that I had here. It was about three quarters of a quart there, so I know I'll have enough to put in the bowl. It's in the hole. No, it's in the bowl. Just fill her up. There is a fill line there. You can see the line. Um, a little more. There we go. There we go, and there we are hopefully going to grow. Cause I want to use this A for spraying. So you just reverse the order that you went. Get that up around there. 
like such. We're out here, tighten her down. This is part one of servicing a farm all A. And uh, you don't know, you know, when you buy a tractor, it doesn't matter where you buy it, what you're gonna run into fluid wise. I've seen some real nightmares. I saw a guy take the back end of a, well, the rear rear end, he was changing out the fluid in the rear end and uh, in a farm all H and he got about five gallons of water out of there, maybe more. And uh, that was, that was a sight to see, and I still have some left in here, so. That's gonna conclude part one, the engine oil, the oil bath for the air cleaner. And uh, in the next video, we're gonna tap into this rear end. Actually, that video is gonna be made right now, but I'm pulling the plug on this one because it's long enough. But uh, listen to that engine, sounds good. Yeah, she just idling along there. See if we can make her bark a little. This snappy little sucker. <laughs>